Joining us live now, the uh, Senator Jackie Lambie. Well, let's start there uh, on Pat Farmer's run. It's in your neck of the woods, Jackie. What do you make of it? I think it's good on Pat. Look, I, I, I think it's great if anybody, whether it's raising money for charity, Pete, or uh, making an issue, putting it right out there front and centre, if you're going to go and do that and run all over Australia, we can only praise you for that, mate. There's no doubt about it. So that's how he's going to um, drive his awareness and good on him. Um, but like I said, anybody that does that, whether it's for that or for charities, um, I, I, I tell you, mate, I feel tired just thinking about it, to be honest. Yeah, no, that's a fair enough point. And I do, I do agree. I mean, it's a, it's a hell of a run, 14,500 kilometres. And, uh, you know, he says he's going to be going through at least a dozen pairs of shoes in that time as well. Uh, for those who are unaware, actually, 1,000 kilometres for every new pair of shoes, apparently, for those who do it full time. Uh, anyway, Jackie, we've got these campaigns running. But having spoken to folks in Alice Springs, I mean, violent, violence there is as bad as it's ever been. It's just, you know... It, uh, publicity has just sort of come off a little bit, but it's ramping back up again. So is Canberra's focus misdirected with all of that said? Um, I think you'll find it's, it's not just in Alice Springs. You know, like I said, I'm going back to Sojourner over the next few weeks. I'm also going to Port Augusta. Uh, they're not they're not sitting well. And then I'll be heading to Western Australia to um, have a look at the Indigenous communities and see what has happened, first of all, since the cash debit card got pulled, um, which is not sitting pretty at the moment. Mate, there are things that can be done right now that can make a significant difference in these Indigenous communities. And I don't know why we need to wait for something to be put in a constitution um, until anything is done and then work all that out. What are we doing? Are we sitting on... Are we just going to sit for the next two years and do nothing in these Indigenous communities when we've seen things that have passed, the past that have worked in the past very, very well, but we're not implementing them? That's all I want to know. I just want to know why we're not doing anything. What is this a standstill moment now for another two years? Why we sit here and allow these sort of things to be happening around those communities right around Australia? Because this is not an excuse, mate, and this should not be used as an excuse. And I want some action taken. So, and I think, yeah, I think, Pete, if action was taken and people were saying, "Well, if you're listening, if you're listening to the voice, then why aren't you taking action now?" Because seriously, I would like to see some action taken, mate. In, in terms of quick fixes, though, what would you suggest? Well, you know what? We had this wonderful old jobs program um, where uh, the, those Indigenous communities, they had a lot of jobs that were um, put into them. They were able to build their own houses, were able to give them trade skills, were able to put it on apprentices. We can no longer do that. That has absolutely been stripped in the last 15 to 18 years. Every time they reduce um, money, they seem to reduce it from that sort of pack. That was, that was a great initiative. Um, to make kids continue to go to school, but also to make sure that there were jobs and those trade skills for maintenance were left within those communities. That would be the first thing that I would be doing. And I'd also be getting those police, police liaison officers out in those communities. They're working very, very well in our springs. I know it's only been a two-year trial, but it's working a treat. These are people taking from those communities themselves and basically brought up as special constables but go in there, in, back into their communities and work alongside their communities, and that seems to be working really, really well. Now, it's only been a two-year trial, I understand that, yeah. but the statistics are wonderful. What it's doing is great. There's no reason why we can't start spreading these out now, mate. OK. When it comes to The Voice, though, if it is successful, and you do have Indigenous communities who can't even agree and on The Voice at the moment, is, is that an example of how, how The Voice would function if, if, it, if it ends up getting up? Well, it's expected when um, somebody's speaking with a voice that you listen to them, mate. It doesn't matter what colour skin you've got. I'm not sure politicians are very good at doing that all the way through. We have our own um, issues here in Tasmania, and I think you'll see that raise its ugly head over the next few weeks. Uh, you know, we have um, tribes down here against each other. Uh, none of them down here actually want the voice. Um, there is reasoning behind that. Um, so... It will be very interesting to watch this play out in Tasmania, especially, I would think, um, over the next month. Um, and I think it's going to get quite vicious down here. OK. More, more divisive is that as October rolls around, do you think? Are you, and, and have you changed your view on it at all? You know, I just said I'm leaving it into the people, uh, into the Tasmanian hands. And obviously, I won't vote until that Saturday. And obviously, if there is enough voting for the voice, then I will, I will vote alongside the voice of Tasmanians. That's what I'm doing. But I am terribly worried. There is a lot that's got to be sorted out, Pete. Once yeah. again, you have a motion sitting up there that just, just seemed to price put up herself 
and Richard Colbeck that needs to examine where all this money is going, who's getting what, uh, where it is going, whether or not it's making any difference. The Labor Party doesn't want to examine this until after the voice. Well, I say, yeah. what is what is stopping you from examining that today, Pete, so we can get moving, so we can make a difference? Not just put in a five-letter word, but I want to see some positive change in these communities, and I'm not seeing that. And what's the hold-up? You mentioned Lydia Thorpe there. What did you make of that verbal fracas she was involved in yesterday morning? You know, I think that um, when you are out that late and you put yourself in that sort of a situation, you had better take responsibility for your actions, to be honest with you, mate. Um, there is no getting out of this. You are a politician um, and sometimes we do muck up, but not taking any responsibility for that yourself is not very helpful. If you do not think you're in a good way, then go and do what the rest of us do and go and get some counselling or psychology because, quite frankly, um, something needs to be done. But I would say this... Julia, you just cannot, you cannot keep doing this. And a good start would be um, you are part of the problem. Take the responsibility of your own actions and take them into your own hands. She is, as we all know, a repeat offender here. Should there, any, should there be any sort of parliamentary intervention? Um, I'm not sure that we have um, much power to intervene. She was voted in by the people um, yeah. of Victoria and, and that is the way it is, mate. So, um, you know, we could make a come Should that be changed, and, and though? I mean... Floor. Well, I'm not, I'm not really sure if you are yeah. elected by your people in your states, taking that away from them is taking away their rights. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know, just in terms of sanctions or, or anything like that, that's sort of more what I was, what I was getting at. Yeah, um, look, I'm, I'm not sure there's much, apart from making her come into the Senate and explain herself and explain yeah. her actions and why she did that, that's pretty much all we've got, mate. Yeah. Good to see you, Jackie. Talk to you soon. Thanks very much for having me on.